No success in the world can compensate for failure in the home. That's why Club Wealth was founded, to help driven, successful, and busy real estate agents like you double their business while building a strong, balanced home life. Join us each week as high-producing agents and team leaders share their stories and unpack the principles and systems they've used to double, triple, and even quadruple their business while enjoying greater quality of life. And now, here's the latest episode of Club Wealth TV. So guys, I am super fortunate to have with me today Mr. Jesse Zagorski. Jesse, as you guys know, is in San Diego, California. He is a real estate agent in San Diego that I've known for many years. I've had the good fortune to work with Jesse now for, I don't know, six plus years. And I uh, absolutely love this man. He, this is, Jesse is the kind of man I want to become. Uh, and I don't say that lightly. That's actually a pretty big deal for me to say that. There's not a lot of guys that I really feel that strongly about in my life. And I will tell you that I love Jesse Zagorski. I really believe that his heart is as genuine as they come. I believe his skill set is as awesome as they come. I believe that his success is as great as they come. And so I'm excited that we get to learn from Jesse today. And we're going to be talking about objection handling and specifically, objection handling for the real estate industry. So those of you that aren't in real estate, you're going to get something out of this too, right? Because Jesse's going to not only share with us how to handle objections in real estate, but the stuff he's going to be teaching, you can use to handle objections with your family, with your wife, your kids, other businesses, anything you do. The stuff that we're going to be talking about today is going to help with that. So Jesse Zagorski, without any further ado, welcome and tell us just briefly a little bit about you and where you come from. Sure, let's do it. And by the way, it will work with your family, your significant others, friends, anybody. The only group it probably doesn't work with, which I've now learned firsthand, is toddlers. <laughs> Toddlers are immune to obje- this is from someone who I have a two and a half year old. So a little bit about me. I have a two and a half year old. I have learned that toddlers are immune to almost anything that they don't actually want to do. It's very similar to some clients we work with probably, but uh, hopefully they have a reason where a toddler is just a toddler. So love my. Say, there's nothing more fun than arguing with a two year old <laughs> <laughs> about price reductions or just about. Oh no, you're talking about anything. <laughs> okay, uh, that's cool. hilarious. I love it. I am a broker here in San Diego, California, the beautiful banner above my head sitting right there. And uh, I've been doing this for about 15 years. I'll do about a million, just over a million dollars in GCI, which I've done each year consecutively for a number of years. And I am a a sales nerd. I am a sales geek. What what do we have about now? We have about 30 minutes for this? Yeah, just about 30 minutes. Yes. Okay. So, because I don't want to teach everything in detail that we're going to do at LABC. I want to do like, I want to go deep in a few things and give some teasers, but we got to give a reason for people to actually come to Denver and hang out in person, right? Well, yes and no. I mean, I say that because the reality is that honestly, I think we're sold out. Oh, well then I'll just teach it all here. That's perfect. (laughs) No, they're still going to come and get mass value. But that, that being said, those of you that have not already purchased your tickets to listing agent bootcamp yet, make sure you go on the website. Uh, and if it'll allow you something, you know, it, it, it's going to go on and off, right? Sometimes it'll allow you to buy the ticket. Sometimes it won't. If we're sold out, it won't. Uh, but we also have a waiting list. And so for those of you that are not able to get a ticket right now, we do have a waiting list and frequently, not super frequently, but occasionally um, someone will have something come up in their life and they just won't be able to make it. And we reach out to the first people that got on that waiting list first. So uh, cool. And it sounds and so that's my background. I've just I've always been a study of human the human nature, human dynamics. I've studied NLP, neuro linguistic programming. I've studied all sorts of different ways that you can connect and relate to people. And step one in objection handling always starts with not generating the objection. So we could start there a little bit just in who you're being. Is, do, do I need to give any more background on myself before we jump in with this? No, let's do it, man. Let's jump in. First, everybody just know Jesse's a rock star. And by the way, if you have questions for Jesse, if you are on the webinar, type it into your chat or your questions and answers box, and we will do everything we can to answer your questions. If you are watching on Facebook Live, make sure you type your questions in on the Facebook Live stream that you're watching. And again, we'll get to your questions as quickly as we can. Uh, so, Jesse, talk to us. What are some some examples of and ways that we can resolve concerns and objections in real estate? So, so the, the first way in terms of generating objections, number one is make sure you understand the difference between a question and an objection. I 
always start here. And, I, and if you've heard me talk yeah. before or you've studied any objection handling, if you're an objection handling master watching this webinar right now, some of the things I talk about might be a little bit, they might feel basic. However, really stop and ask yourself, do I ever make these mistakes, right? Confusing a question for an objection is something that mm -hmm. I do. I'm guilty of it. And I've done this for years, right? I was at a listing appointment yesterday mm -hmm. and the seller were taught, we're walking through the house and suddenly she, she busts out with what's your commission, right? Out of nowhere. And it was unrelated to anything. And so my first instinct was to say, um, it's a great question. We'll talk about it at the end, but frankly, we're actually, we're kind of wrapping through and we're going back to the paperwork anyway. And we'd gone through all that and she had another question. So I just, answered it very straightforward and she said okay great and that was it it wasn't an so objection wait, so, so it, you didn't go into like an objection handler at that point nothing there was no need to go into anything it was a question it was a i mean if you're going to sell your house it is a legitimate question to ask someone what do you charge and the way you answer that question and this is the most common objection that I think most people we discuss is around commission, especially mm -hmm. with discount brokerages and things like yep. that coming up. This is where most people tend to ask me questions about in terms of objection handling. So I usually start here, but sometimes it's just a question. If you were going to sell something, you'd want to know how much it's going to cost to sell it. It's a very natural question. And the way we answer it, this is back to generating your own objections. If you confuse that question with an objection and the way you say it, if you don't say it confidently, if you say it like you're expecting them to push back, if you say it in any way that are giving unconscious signals and we could spend an entire hour talking about body language, look at Michael yeah. nodding his head. The way yeah. you say it um, is, uh, by the way, there's a question in the chat, Michael, I'll let you handle those. The way you say it is going to trigger subconsciously in the person you're speaking with how they're going to respond. If you say, they say, what's your commission? And it's the appropriate point in time in your consultation to say, this is what we charge and we're amazing. Let's get started. They go, great. If you say, you know, well, we sometimes do this and maybe we could do that. I don't know. Does that work for you? And I'm exaggerating. No one watching this does that. But we send off subconscious signals where our body language, our voice will say, I charge X percent. Notice I'm not saying actual percentages. That's not the whole point. It doesn't matter what you charge. It's about right. whatever it is that you charge. That's what, you, that's what you're going to charge. You could, your body language will say, right, I'm shrinking with my shoulders. Well, this is what we do. You have to believe that what it is, and this is not objection handling. I will switch. I will switch topics here and move on. But this is truly important. Know the difference between questions and objections. Number well, one. And, and to your point, I love the, the the unconscious signals because oftentimes we do. You know, we'll you know somebody will ask the question, and most agents when somebody says, "Well, what do you charge?" Most agents instantly get tight. They're, they're, I mean, really, like they, they get on the defensive and they're like, because they assume that somebody's going to be hitting them up for a commissionectomy, right? They right. want to get you to lower your commission in some way. But the reality is that's probably not what's about to happen. And right. even if it is, don't worry about it. There's a thousand ways to handle it. And, yes. and remember this, and I, I want people, I'm going to put this in the chat as you're talking about the next part of this. I'm going to, I'm going to type this in the chat box on the Facebook post, but price is only a concern in the absence of value. So when you bring enough value, you can charge whatever you want. It doesn't matter what you charge. So Jesse, keep going. Well, that's, and I'm going to keep trying to go, but I know you and me, we're going to bounce back and forth. And as long as we're giving value and people are getting value out of this, then it doesn't matter where we go here. Exactly. So, in, price is only an issue in the absence of value. It's why I said when this client last night asked me a question about commission, it came at the appropriate time in our appointment. Mm -hmm. You need to have illustrated your value first before you talk about commission, in my personal opinion. I think Michael agrees with that. So if they, right off the bat, if they ask you about commission, this will get us, I happen to teach you six steps to objection handling, which work not just for real estate, but for any industry, anything ever. So step number one, right, in objection handling is to ignore. And that sounds cold and it sounds callous. And I don't mean you're literally going to ignore it. Well, Michael, Michael Hellickson, when he was listing five houses a day, he probably literally would ignore it, just run over it like a bulldozer and just keep moving forward. Right? Absolutely. That, Absolutely. That, and the energy he was bringing would just, if you can do that and come into the house and take charge, you might never have to handle the objection. However, when I say ignore, I typically acknowledge it, but don't address it in that moment. And I'm not going to purposely bring it back up again unless the client brings it back up. So what I mean is this, you're sitting down, you're talking to someone and they suddenly say, hey, by the way, will you discount your commission? That's a different question, by the way, than what is your commission, right? That's right. Will you discount your commission? It could still be a question. Your answer could still be no. 
But you could say it's a really great question. I love the way you think. Let me make a note, and I will make sure we come back to that and cover that at the end. Um, all right, oh. any other questions? And then we move right on. Right? It's a great question. We'll come back to that. And then you're going to address it after you build your value. You don't want to frustrate people. You don't want to never, if they're really committed to it, you're going to discuss it. But most people are less committed to their objections than you are to pushing it back to later on. The reason for it is this. Think about your brain as a record. Is anyone on this call old enough to remember records? I only sort of am, right? <laughs> Dude, I remember 45s. Are you kidding? <laughs> Back when Michael had a, had a car with square wheels and he would drive to a point uh, and push uh, like a Flintstone mobile. No, hey, uh, don't feel bad, man. My, my, my Flintstone mobile had an eight track in it, man. We, we were <laughs> So, so if it's want to do a record, you could picture it's a it's a digital file playing in their brain, which is this little loop. But records are easier because they went in a circle. So you picture this record that's spinning in a circle, and they're trying to listen to you as you go through whatever you're talking about. And in their head, there's this record playing that their uncle Stephen told them that you could get a discount on commission. And don't forget to ask, oh, oh, you're meeting with a real estate agent today? You're going to list your house? And Stephen lives in the other side of the country, but he said, don't forget to ask them if you can get a discount on commission. And so as they're trying to listen to you, they've got this little record spinning around in their head going, don't forget to ask about commission. Don't forget to ask about commission. Don't forget to ask about commission. And suddenly it just bubbles up to a point where they, they'll just all of a sudden remember it, right? They, they weren't consciously thinking about it. They'll be like, oh, and they just, before they forget, they just blurt it out and say it. It doesn't mean you need to handle it on the spot. So step number one is ignore. They may never bring it back up again. They just had to ask you about it, right? And so you're going to make a note and say, great thing, we'll cover that, knowing that it probably will come back up again, but we'll see how committed to that objection they are. They don't want a lockbox. I don't want a lockbox. I don't want this. I don't want that. Whatever the objection might be, it doesn't matter. We could do other industries. Sound good? <laughs> I love it. We got Damon Gatier, Angie Bit, Cody, Rick Rainus, and Barry Jenkins on the line, and they just Barry's like, boom, absolutely. Yeah. So, so let's ask you this. I want to. I want to. I want to help this agent because some. We're, I, this always happens when we start talking objection handling, and the objection on price comes up. Everybody wants to know, well, how do I handle that objection on the commission? Because you know it's such a big objection, and I always get in. So, so John asks, what if it's a high end seller? who sold multiple properties and says up front, I've never paid more than 5%. So let me tell you, Mr. Realtor, I will not pay more. It's a very good question. And here's where, can I give a moment of honesty here? No matter how much we talk about all of this stuff, right? I'm in San Diego where price points are high. If you're selling a million dollars, $2 million house or whatever high end is for your market, and someone's not going to pay more than 5%, but you typically charge six. And again, we should talk in apples or whatever it is, right? For the sake of this, this is whatever your commission might be, right? If you normally charge more than that, but it, as a business decision, you go, wow, it's still a good commission. You're going to do what you can to assess it. But at the end of the day, you may not always get it, right? But it's okay to, to have some fun with this and see what you can do to negotiate. So what would I do with that one? I would never pay more than X percent. So I'm going to use a technique. I'm just going to jump right here into some of the techniques. We'll come back to the six stages of objection. That my favorite technique for commission is going to be the level shift. Some of these guys, Damon, Barry, that we've talked about before, you've probably heard me say this, but it's because it just works. And it's not like it's rocket science. It's a very simple concept. The level shift or the reframe is this. You take something that the client has said, so I'm reading from the chat box. He said, um, you know, up front, I've never paid more than, okay, so first of all, let me, let me go back to what he said here before I explain the level shift. He said, up front, I've never paid more than X percent. So if this is on the phone, the answer is great. Totally respect that. When's a good time for me to come over? Four or six o'clock. Because you're not going to negotiate that up front over the phone. The first okay. thing you get when you walk through the front door and they say, just remember, I'm not paying more than X percent. Totally respect that. Show me the house. Or totally respect that. Let me get and do what you're going to normally do, knowing that you probably will have an uphill battle to, to go. You have to address it later if they're that adamant about it, but it's the right time and place. So when you get to the right time and place, here is the level shift. You're going to take something they've said and you're going to associate a new meaning with it. I cannot go head to head with someone saying, I will not pay more than 5% and say, but you should pay more than 5%, but I won't pay more, but you should pay more because that's a silly toddler type argument. Instead, I'm going to bring it back to value. What I'm really hearing you say is when you sell this house, you want to make sure you have the absolute most amount of money possible in your pocket. Is that correct? So is that what he said? No, not necessarily, but it's a very logical 
connection that easily he could say, well, yeah, that is what I want. Now we're no longer talking about 5% versus X percent versus Y percent. Now we're talking about, can I, Jesse Zagorski, bring to him the most money in his pocket versus all other agents? So this is where you have to know. So John, good question. Now we get into the handling section of it. And this is where you really have to know what you do to bring value. Do you believe and can you illustrate that you can net him more money than other agents? Right. If you if he believes, my guess is that this client probably believes that all real estate agents are the same. It's a very common belief that people have because, frankly, yeah. a lot of real estate agents are the same. So whether you're going, so whether you're going to use statistics, stories, whatever, there's a number of ways to do this, and this is why I love teaching more of the concept and letting you have to put your own flavor on it. I can tell you what I say, right? Because I use statistics as to how much closer list to sale ratio we do than the average. Look at days on market. You look at other factors that will influence this. I tend to go a lot towards statistics and numbers, but you can also tell stories based on you know getting what you paid for and that we can cover that. We'll have a few minutes to cover that also and how to use a story to handle this. But John, does that answer a little bit of your question? He said, yeah, that's exactly what I said, but it didn't get the, it didn't resolve the concern completely. You know, and I would throw in there, I mean, there's lots of, if you want to, there's techniques and there's scripts, right? And they're two different things Mm -hmm. and both are good. There's, I'll give you a script that I would memorize uh, that sometimes can help with this. I would say to them, I would say something like, okay, John, so let me ask you this. What's more important to you? How much I make on your property or how much you make when selling your property? You know, and find out what's really, truly important to him because to Jesse's point, if, when you can isolate the objection at that point and figure out, okay, is it that they want to get a certain amount or is it just they don't want to pay real estate agents because they don't like real estate agents for some reason? That's, those are two very different things. So, so let's, you just said isolate and I will come back to commission and I will give more specific stuff for John to use here, but I want to make sure we get the basic overview format. So the first step was, was ignore. The second step is to re ignore, then restate, right? So when it comes back up again, this is where a reframe or a level shift comes in, right? We're going to restate it saying, look, I like the way you think. Sounds like you really want to make sure you get the most amount of money in your pocket possible when we close this transaction. Is that correct? So ignore, restate. If you're writing these down, the next one is isolate. So before you handle this objection, make sure that you know every other objection that goes with it. So once you say, look, you want to have the most amount of money in your pocket, is that, is that what you're looking for? He says, yes. You say, great. Other than commission, is there anything else that would stop us from working together? Or other than commission, is there any other questions you have that you want to make sure we answer before we start working together? If you prefer to say it in the positive and keep it like, look, I know we're working together. What other questions do you have? Get everything else on the table. So that way you know when you handle it, it's done deal. You're signing this contract. Okay? So ignore, restate, isolate. Then you're going to cushion it. Cushion means you're taking the edge off. So you're going to go to, the, uh, um, you're going to, go to this uh, client and you're going to say, hey, by the way, this question you're asking about how to get the most amount of money in your pocket possible, this you are totally on track. This is the number one thing my clients ask me directly before they hire me to sell their house. <laughs> okay, Cushioning. You're making them feel normal. In psychology, it's called normalizing. And I'm also, I just planted a little future pacing command there that, that they're already hiring me to. To, to list their house. You're always talking in this, um, let's see, hard client does not want to pay the realtor. Got it. Okay. So we'll come back that to that. That is one. so ninja, Jesse. Can I just say, I just, yeah. I love the way he does this because everything Jesse has done is absolutely from a psychological standpoint, it is designed to get them to absolutely sign on the bottom line at the end of the day. And, and it works. It really does work. Now he's not trying to get them to do something that's not good for them. That would be different. So right. he's not manipulating, but what he is doing is he's guiding them down a path that's going to get them what they really want, which is to get the most money for their home. And he knows he's the right guy to do it. That's it. That's the difference between persuasion and manipulation. Use these for peaceful purposes. Your heart is in the right place. I truly believe that when someone meets me, I am the right realtor for them, assuming they want to sell their house or assuming they want to buy a house. I I just, I met with a buyer the other day. um, And I know we're talking listing agent bootcamp, but I, I, the same stuff works with buyers. This buyer kept talking about, well, we're interviewing a number of agents. Rarely do, do buyers, I think, interview multiple agents. However, this buyer was very systematic and they were going to interview a number of agents. And he kept saying, if we work together, blah, blah, blah. And so I actually stopped him halfway through. And as long as you have fun with it, and I was in good rapport, I said, hey, I just have to pause you. I don't know if you noticed, but you actually keep saying, 
if we work together. And you notice I keep saying when we work together. So if you're, if it's okay with you, I'd love it. You should probably start saying when we work together as well. And he just laughed and he was like, <laughs> okay, all right. And yes, he signed the buyer agency agreement. We're working together. Um, but that's one of those things that if you know, once you start noticing these things, the reason he was saying if instead of when is he negotiates contracts for his company. And so he's very careful when he's talking to different vendors until a decision is made not to say something to uh, get in trouble with this company. I said, look, you're not getting in trouble with anyone. Just let's just, just assuming we're working together until for, further notice. So let's just say when, and then you can picture what it'll feel like for us to work together. Sound good? Great. Try it on. And now what happens is on a subconscious level, this guy is saying to himself, as well as you saying it, that it's when, when, when. And by the way, you guys, did you know that your subconscious mind is far more powerful than your conscious mind and cannot tell the difference between reality and what you tell it to believe? So here's Jesse saying when, 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 instead of if, if, if. The guy in his mind, his subconscious mind is now believing the new reality, which is when, so, so let's jump back to John. And I'm gonna because we got ignore, restate, isolate, cushion. We're about to get to the handle, and then the last step, which is super important. Remember the last step? You know the last step of objection. Go for right? it. Dude, I'm letting you do this. I'm just all typing. All right. Well, well, let's let's leave it for a minute. We'll come back to the last step. It's really this is the most important part of it, though. So back to John's question. He said, "This was a really hard client. He does not want to pay the realtor." So that is a different objection than will you discount your commission? This is, I don't really think realtors have value, period, right? That is a different thing to address. And so you need to dig in by first asking questions and then you can use a technique, which is uh, like, I call it what specifically. That's how it was taught to me. I don't know if there's an official name for it, but you're just saying, I totally respect that, right? I'm just curious, what is it specifically that uh, makes you think you can sell this house on your own and net more money than using an agent? And you put it in there to the court, right? And so now they've got to think about it. Hmm, well... I don't know, I guess. <laughs> right? Right. You, you want to you gently call their beliefs into question mm-hmm. in a very nice way, but you need them to do the work. You need them to give you more details so you can handle it, but you also need them to think about it because if you tell someone something, it's a lot better for them to come to the realization. They're just like, well, I, I mean, I don't know X, Y, Z, whatever their reason is. Right. Letting them come to it will help you a lot more. There's a, uh, there's a scene in the movie Hitch. Uh, <laughs> I wish I could play this scene right now, but we don't know. I love time. that movie. It's awesome. Did you remember the scene where he's teaching him how to give a goodbye kiss? Oh, yeah. And he's like, no, 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 no. You go 90. I go 10. Never go 100%. You overzealous. Yeah, I totally remember that. That's it. So so the whole, if you don't remember that movie, anyway, Google, Google the scene, Hitch kissing scene or learning to kiss. You can watch this clip. It's like a minute and a half. But if you, if you guys, if you're on a team or you have people in your office and you want to explain this stuff, this is the best way to explain it for objection handling. Yeah. Will Smith explains that when you're giving a kiss, you want to go in 90% of the way and pause and hold. I'm going towards my camera. You want to go in 90% of the way, right? And you just pause and you hold and let the other person come 10% up to you. And it's a funny scene because they end up getting it wrong and kissing each other. But the whole idea is with a client, if you just tell them, this is what it's going on, this is, you got to give them a minute to arrive at the thought process and think through it. So if you're talking about commission and they believe that an agent isn't worth paying money to, right? You can say, I'm just curious, what, what do you think agents do most of the time? Let them tell you, right? Nothing. They stick a sign around and then be ready to explain all of the ways that you do things to add value that they hadn't considered. Well, did you know we... X, Y, Z. Did you know, I know someone was, uh, Barry's on here, targeted Facebook ads, right? Barry could probably launch into talking about, did you know that using demographically targeted Facebook ads, or I guess we don't use demographics, but we use customized because that's, that's a violation. So forget that part. We just <laughs> use some sort of targeting in Facebook ads in geographic areas. There we go. We can do that. Geographically targeted Facebook ads to find the perfect buyer for your house. This is the database we have of buyers. This is what we do. We have a database of 15,000 buyers, six buyers, a hundred buyers. It doesn't matter. You you launch into this one thing knowing that you have seven more to say behind it, but that one thing, could you say, would you aware that real estate agents, that, that, a, that a powerful real estate agent like myself can do that? No? Well, there you go. Can you see how that will allow me to bring more people into your house and get your home not only sold more quickly, but actually net you more money because of the increased exposure? Does that make sense? Great. So the last step, 
after you handle it. That section is called the handle. This is the hardest part to teach people unless you're just memorizing scripts because it's different for each person. But we can talk a little more for the next few minutes about the handle section. And the last step, this is the super important step I said, is, say it with me, Michael, close. <laughs> close. And the problem is that most agents don't even think about that. They won't do that, especially today. But that's it. If there's an awkward pause in the conversation after you have handled the objection, it's probably because you should be closing. And it could be a hard close or it could be a soft close, right? But you have to close. Like you have to ask for the sale. If you don't ask for the sale, you're not going to get it. Right. And so you oftentimes have to ask for the close five, six, seven times, right? If you're handling this commission objection, you're not just going to say, aha, here's all my value. Well, let's get started. They're going to say, well, great. They might go like, eh, right? So then you that's why I want you to have five or six other ways you can continue to handle these things because if you are truly committed to getting your commission, whatever it is, you're going to get it more often than if you're only kind of so, so committed to it, right? And let's talk about that for a second because let me tell you something, going for that extra 1% or half a percent or 2% or whatever your number is, right? Going for that little bit extra and being a little bit more tenacious about making sure that you're getting paid what you're worth let me tell you something that will determine what you're worth. I mean, seriously, in terms of, of financially, that will absolutely determine what you're worth and what you get paid at the end of the year. And you start adding up a quarter, a half, a full point here and there over time. It adds up to huge dollars, you guys. And here's what's happening right now. Because we're in this wicked hot market, you know, where there's low inventory and everybody that, you know, if, if you can, if you can find a seller, it's instant money, right? And so what happens is everybody goes in and they're cutting their commissions, cutting their commissions. You know what? Go for it. If you want to cut your commission, go for it. But the reality is that the reason people are doing it is because they're either lazy, don't know how to resolve concerns and handle objections, or they don't see enough value in what they do to stand up for what they believe they're worth. So I know I only got a few more minutes. Can I give a couple of actionable Please. scripts? Because I'm, I'm just, I'm, yes. I love scripts, but I'm also not a big fan. I'd rather have people think through them. However, if you do want a starting point, if you're talking commission still, and we spent a lot of time talking about this today, but it's a really good one. If they, you know, you go to talk about your value and you say, I'm just curious, you know, in, did you interview other agents or did you hear about some people that were discounting their commission? They're probably going to tell you, yes. That's like Michael said, there are a lot of agents that will come in and their value proposition is I do less for less. Sometimes they try to say I do more for less, but do you really get more for less? And how often does that work in your life? So right. if you came in and you said, Hey, I'm just curious. So how quickly did they, did they discount their commission? And if you're, if you're interviewing first and, they're, and somehow you're not going to close them on the spot and they're going to interview other people after and you have to leave without getting it signed, which I hate doing, but if you have to leave and you're going to set a trap for the next agent coming in after you, right, then you're going to say, how quickly did they, did they reduce their commission? And they're going to say, what do you mean? I'm going to say, well, think about it. The average agent, I don't know how many homes they sell, but the average agent sells between four to six houses a year. That's it. And if they're coming in and they, did they discount their commission pr pretty quickly? They were, yep. Okay. It's typical. And it doesn't mean they're not a good agent, but that's their own money out of their pocket that they are giving away, right? This is possibly one fourth to one sixth of their income for the year that they're giving away. So if they can't even negotiate their own commission, as someone just typed this in, if you can't even negotiate their own commission, you know exactly where I'm going. If they can't even negotiate their own commission and they're willing to give away their own money, how quickly when they're negotiating your sales price, could they say something to give away 10, 20, $30,000 of your money and the equity in your house without, they might not even knowing they're doing it and giving it away. Does that make, is that the type? So when you think about the agent that you want, I'm assuming you want an agent who is a very strong negotiator like myself, correct? Great. So, and then I'm going to what? What am I going to do? I'm You're going to restate your close. And, this close. Is, and by the way, Tristan uh, just joined us and he's and Tristan, the comment you just posted went into your chat, not into the, uh, into the, the comments in the thread here. Just FYI, uh, Tristan was trying to put a shout out to us in here, but uh, you got to do it actually in the comment section there. But anyway, point being that, yes, you're right. You've got to restate your close. And here's the thing. Most agents give up at the first or second attempt at restating that close. And so what you need to do 
do is you guys don't begin to understand a lot of times you're not going to get the sale until the seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth. Yeah, I tell you what, I've even had it go as far as 12 objections before I finally got the close. Um, and I use the same closing line all the time, just personally. And there's lots of great scripts out there. I would suggest that, who, that you have a script memorized for your close, something that you use all the time. My personal script that I use is always the same, and it's and I, I, t- I type it in. Or I mean, hey, Tristan, thank you for that. We love you too, brother. Um, I always uh, I always couple this with an NLP technique, which is the the body language. So I'll say, "Are there any other questions before we get started on the paperwork?" Right, and I'm smiling and shaking my head back and forth. And what happens is they'll come back with another objection. Cool, awesome. Now I can resolve that concern. I can go through my steps. You know, I I I, I want to make sure. You know, if if it's just a question, I'll ignore it. But uh, you know, like for example, if they say, "Will you lower your commission?" I'll say, <laughs> "I love the way you think, Jesse. Are there any other questions before we get started on the paperwork?" <laughs> Like that's one of my personal favorites. I do that all the time. I love it. If you want, and you can use that close over and over. Michael clearly has done it. It works. You can say, if you memorize one, memorize that one. Some people, if you want a few different, um, let's see, George is asking, do you have your objections in PDF form, Jesse? I don't think we do right now. We have some of this in PDF. We'll, I'll make sure we put something together. We can send it out. Um, but the, uh, as you were saying, Michael, if you want one, you're going to use, but some people might want to have a different variation to use. I like having a few different ones. I love towards the end of the listing presentation, if I'm closing for the second, third, fourth time, you come up with a more a softer close. So, right, you handle the objection and you say, so did, were you ready to get your home on the market next week or did you need another couple of weeks to get it cleaned up before we actually go live? So alternative choice clothes. I love it. It's a, you're giving them two choices. You're taking them. Now we're into the logistics of what it's like to be listed. I didn't say, are you hiring me? I just said, I'm just, I'm moving right past that to the, we must be moving forward. So are we getting it live on the MLS next week? Or are we needing a couple of weeks to clean it up first? I'm still going to sign the listing agreement today. I'm going to have an exclusion from the MLS form until whenever date we said it was. I don't care if it's nine months in advance, but that's another very easy. You could say um, there's all sorts of alternative choice closes you can use for closing such as, right? So do, do you want to put the lockbox on the front door? Or is it around the, the hose bib on the side? Is that better? And there, the old school really cheesy is like, do you want to use your pen or mine? You know, like those ones people see through, but super logistical things. People don't even know that you've now, and I don't mean to be, you know, we're not being manipulative. We're being persuasive, right? So it's just very straightforward. The photographer, do you think it's better to shoot photos here during the daytime or is the afternoon when the, depending on how the light's coming in? Right? Things like that. Using multiple closes, because if you're going to say this a few times, you're going to feel like, how do I say the same thing over and over again? You can, but this will help. Yeah, and you know, here's the thing, you guys, having some of these memorized, really what it does, and by the way, Kevin Markarian, shout out, it's good to see you on here, brother. Uh, and so, you know, here's the thing, we're not big believers in you've got to memorize every script in the world. We really want to teach you how to have dialogue, right? And that's what Jesse's doing, is he's teaching you the, com- the communication patterns, the language patterns that will allow you to resolve any concern, whether you have an objection mem- a handle or memorized or not. That being said, Having a couple in your arsenal, right? Having a couple of, of objection handlers kind of in your back pocket that you know you're going to use over and over and over again at least gives you a starting point and at least makes it easier for you to focus on them and their body language than on the words that you're saying. Right. That, that's why Tristan, Tristan, and I appreciate that. I'm just reading some of the comments he's saying, like, just ch- if you're going to put out a PDF, at least change it up because clients have been u- hearing these same old scripts forever. And they have. That's what I'm saying. The, the close of like, do you want to use your pen or mine? Your pen or mine? We jokingly say things like that. But even though they may work, people can see through it. Clients have become more and more sophisticated that mm-hmm. I don't want to teach rotely memorized scripts. I want you to right. think about how do you phrase this? And the more you can put your own personality and creativity into your response and go back to then listening and connecting with your client, that's how these objection handlers work even better. It's not really a handler so much as, uh, I guess they're objection handlers, but they're, they're, obje- they're, uh, they're objection removers, <laughs> right? We're not yeah. just trying to handle it. We want to, we want to address it and move on from it. Right. And by the way, for those of you that are thinking to yourselves, and I know I'm, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of this and I'm, I'm guessing that this is going through some of your minds. If you're thinking to yourself, you know, I really would love to go through an entire course of Jesse teaching me how to do this stuff. 
we actually have coming up for Club Wealth University, which we haven't even officially announced yet. But just so you know, it's coming. We're going to announce it at Listening Agent Bootcamp. So you guys are finding out a little bit earlier than everybody else. But we have literally the the absolute most like this is this is a game changer uh, online university for real estate. This is completely different than anything you've seen out there uh, in the post licensing real estate world. Like you know, in terms of educating you on how to actually make money, Jesse is going to be working on. On our NLP course, which is going to teach you all of these cool things that you can do in terms of language patterns, how to resolve concerns, objection handling, all that kind of stuff. If you're interested in finding out more about that, type in Club Wealth U or Club Wealth University in the chat box there so that we can make sure we remember to reach out to you when it goes live. But uh, do, do you want me to scare everyone away from taking that course? You ready? <laughs> yeah. You seriously. actually have to practice them to ingrain them and learn them. Sorry, guys. So still tell us you're interested, but that's the key. None of this stuff is, I mean, I saw Kevin, Kevin Markarian. Thank you for the shout out. He said, I'm seriously psychic with this NLP stuff. It just comes from practicing it really. I mean, some of this stuff I learned naturally. And some of this stuff is because I've just practiced it for years and I love it. And so it doesn't feel like hard work. It's just something I truly enjoy doing. I used to write out my sentences by hand and, you know, every you know, 10, 10 a day, every day. And it's not hours of practice. It's like 20 minutes a day five days a week for a while. I won't tell you how long is a while, but it makes a difference. <laughs> but you know, you're hitting the nail on the head. It's, it, you know, it's kind of like prospecting, right? Like I don't want to go out and prospect 20 hours in a day. I'd be better off you know, prospecting two hours a day for 10 days. I get better results. I'm on my game. And the same thing is true with whatever I want to learn, right? That's why we don't say to somebody, you know, Hey, come into club wealth and we're just going to dump all the information on you because you won't learn it. You won't internalize it. And it's really about internalizing this stuff line upon line, precept upon precept, so that what happens is it becomes a part of you and you don't even realize that it's happened. You just start, you all of a sudden find yourself in a situation you're like, Oh, I just said that thing that, that I heard, you know, I just, I just used that, that line or that technique that Jesse taught me and it, and it worked, but it becomes subconscious. Go ahead. That, that's the biggest part of objection handling, I truly believe. And the more you focus on scripts, this is a side benefit that you don't even realize. This is why I don't dislike the scripts because they, they do serve a purpose. Even if you're using the same old tired, trite scripts and you feel like your clients have heard them a bunch of times, if you're doing it in an authentic way and it gives you a sense of confidence, your clients, they won't remember exactly what you said, but they'll remember how you made them feel. And because of that, in that moment, when you are feeling like a powerful salesperson, that just by watching this, guys, you are becoming more and more powerful. I hope you know that. So if you're feeling this power inside you as you're sitting with a client, and it's a confident, calm, but connected power, they're going to resonate with that. And they're going to start to, to be war warmed over, not only by the words you say, but by this feeling of like, I feel like I want to work with this person. I just, I don't know what it is. I have clients saying this to me, right? That I had someone, the, the person from the appointment yesterday said to me, you know, you beat out a, a couple other really big uh, agents. And I saw the folder sitting on their table and, uh, and they were big local agents. And, I, and they said, you beat out these other agents. And I, it wasn't, I don't know if there was anything specific. I just really felt like it was, you know, this was, I just knew I wanted to work with you. That and it. that's the thing. And you, I love what you just said. And I hope you guys heard that because we say this all the time. I don't know who coined that phrase originally, but it's not just a phrase. It's the truth. They, and I want to say it was Zig Ziglar. I could be wrong, but they won't remember what you said. They will remember how you made them feel. And you guys, that is so important. Go I ahead. think it was Maya Angelou. Is that possible? I'm Googling it right now. It may now. have been. <laughs> Very possible. It may have been Maya Angelou. And I probably misquoted it to some degree, but the point is. Yeah, you, you nailed it. That's exactly it, man. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, it really is, though. It's about making sure that you leave them with the feeling that, hey, I can do this. I can do it here. I can do it now. Same thing goes with public speaking, right? If I'm speaking at an event, it's very important that I project confidence and that I help them feel confidence in themselves. If you can help people feel confident in themselves, you give them some you know, unconscious or subconscious permission to elevate who they are right now and to become even greater than what they are. In every way, in everybody you touch, if you're focused on that, how can I elevate this person? How can I fill their bucket? Then guess what? The results that need to come will come. You will get what you want. They will get what they want, and everybody will be uplifted and empowered. Uh, so go ahead. Did you find it? 
Yeah, but I have found like six different references to different people. Definitely not necessarily Maya Angelou. She used it in a speech in some year way back when, but I haven't attributed everybody from the Hamburglar from the McDonald's commercial to uh, like six other people. Hamburglar, man. I love the way Hamburglar, Hamburglar makes me feel. I love He's those. deep thinker, right? the Hamburglar. Yeah. Can't you tell? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, look, we're out of time, you guys, but here's the thing. I love Jesse Zagorski. I'm absolutely so excited that you came and spent time with us today. And I'm even more excited that you're going to be at Listing Agent Bootcamp and you're going to be speaking with all of us there. Um, and I am so excited about Club Wealth University and your contribution to Club Wealth University in terms of this NLP course, which we got to still figure out what we're going to call it. But oh my gosh. Let's I'm, do it. I, I can't wait. I mean, seriously, I here, here's what I'll tell you this. I, particularly when it comes to sales skills, I feel like, and, and there's some great courses and some great instructors out there. Don't get me wrong. You and I are friends with a lot of them. We've even promoted many of them and had success with them, but there's something missing in the way that they're all taught. And there's, and there's been a gap in my opinion, there's been this huge gap in the knowledge base of real estate agents. And then specifically in the last five years, I feel like as a group, Real estate agents have lost the ability to sell, have lost the ability to communicate in a way that conveys the message and in a comfortable, natural fashion gets people moving forward in the things that they need to be progressing in. And, the, and what you're going to be teaching in the course is going to help solve that. So I cannot wait uh, to get this thing in place because it's not... Although a lot of people have talked about that they've never really packaged it in this way and made it consumable in the way that you have and made it easy for agents to both learn it and to internalize it so it becomes truly a part of who they are. So I'm excited. All right. I'm excited too. So, right on. All right, Jesse, any parting thoughts before we wrap up today? No, my parting thoughts. I'm just super excited to be a part of this listing agent boot camp in Denver coming up. And I love everyone that's here. Um, thank you for being watching this live. Thank you for watching the recordings later. Um, if you have someone that needs help in San Diego, I got a, a call from a Club Wealth member yesterday sending a referral down to me. I love those. Those are my faves, really. And this is not NLP. This is a genuine like thank you to anyone who, you know, and, and uh, I might even send you a fun uh, gift if you look on uh, uh, Mike Bjorkman's uh, Facebook page. There's a, a singing telegram in the form of a chicken. I once sent to his office for a uh, for a referral that they had sent down to me. Anyway, so- that was funny. I got to admit that was hilarious. Uh, I, I think though that the best gift uh, was the one that uh, you sent, and I won't necessarily mention their name, although the, that he's watching right now uh, was the forty two thousand dollar referral fee that you sent a good friend of ours. Uh, I, I think he was probably pretty happy about that one. So that, that is a ve- that is a very good one, absolutely. Yeah, then, and that comes from selling uh, luxury houses. That just comes straight in. So yeah, if anybody wants to send me a luxury. Uh, home buyer seller. Uh, absolutely. Happy, happy <laughs> I love it. You, All right. Happy to send you a $42,000 check. <laughs> I, seriously, like you love signing that check. I'll I bet. love it. I love I, it. I would have photocopied that one. That's a good one. 100%. Right on. Well, everybody, thank you so much for watching today. Jesse, thanks for doing this with us. And here's the thing. If you haven't signed up already, go to clubwealth.com forward slash LABC. Uh, and by the way, if you have signed up or, or whether you have or haven't, Reach out to us. Go to clubwealth.com and click on the schedule a strategy session button. Take the time to have a conversation with someone like Jesse or I that you know has produced at a higher level than you that we can just look at your business, and give you some ideas on what you can do in the next 12 months to grow your business. We won't even charge you for it. Uh, and there's no sales pitch. If you don't want to, you know, we're not going to try and browbeat you into signing up for coaching. Just come. Let us help you out. And uh, someday down the road, who knows, maybe good karma will come back our way. So have a great day, everybody. And remember, inside you, there's a world-class B just dying to get out. You got to choose to unleash that beast. So go do something today at a world-class level and we'll see you next time.